Hello everyone, and welcome to the second episode, the first official build episode of my Tamiya Beetle. What we're doing here is we're checking for any of the mold lines on the vehicle. What I like to do is use a Sharpie to go ahead and highlight all those, so when I sand them off, I can be sure that they're gone. So you just go ahead, highlight any of those mold lines so you can be sure you get them all taken care of. Here I'm just test fitting the trunk to make sure I'm getting rid of all those lines and not getting rid of anything that should be there. Fortunately the hood and trunk don't seem to have any real body lines so that makes our job a little easier. I like to use regular nail files since they're a little bit cheaper than buying the actual model kit files and they work just as well. So basically you just keep sanding until the marker line is completely gone and you'll know you took care of that body line. After I cut that little piece of the sprue out, I just go ahead and take a razor knife, cut the little edges off. You can also do this with a piece of sandpaper or a standing stick if you prefer. It's a little bit dangerous to do it this way. You can cut them too far, but it is my preferred method. So here I had a little trouble getting this last piece with my bigger sanding stick. So here I switched to a smaller one, which I purchased at my local hobby shop. I did notice that the Tamiya stamp was on the inside of the roof here. I went ahead and scraped that off. I, uh, again, try to get things looking as perfect as I possibly can. Once that's done, I just went ahead and grabbed a 600 grit Tamiya sanding sponge, sanded all the lines down that I accidentally put in there with my scraper, and then I went ahead and sanded down real well those areas I sanded the mold lines off of, and gave the whole body a good scuff with that 600 grit Tamiya sanding sponge. Once that's done, you do the same with the hood, the trunk, and uh, right away I'm going to go ahead and do all the other body panels that also need to be painted the same color as the exterior. Uh, now I should note that the base of the mirrors also needed to be painted in the body color, and I completely forgot, but I will go back and get those a little bit later. I also went ahead and got the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement out, my preferred Mala Glue, and I went ahead and glued the hinges in on the hood and the trunk right away, as I wanted them painted the same color as the body as well.
At this point, I'm gluing the dashboard onto the front firewall as these parts both required being painted the same color as the body and I thought it'd be easier to paint them when they're already glued together. Same thing for this other portion on the rear firewall. Again, it needs to be painted the same color as the body, so I went ahead and glued it on right away. And here I am cleaning up the rear brake lights. Uh, the base of these also needs to be painted the same color as the body, but only half of it. So I'm going to go ahead and use my Tamiya tapes and uh, tape those off. Now I should note that uh, this is my airbrush I've been using. It's the Harder and Steenbach Evolution Silver Line. It's been a great airbrush, but I've dropped it a few times. You can see here the tip's got some pieces broken off. Uh, you can also see when I change angles here that the trigger's a little bit bent, again, from dropping it. So I thought since I'm doing this, it'd be a good time to switch to a new, fancier airbrush for you guys. Went ahead and purchased from my friends over at Splash Paints the new Infinity CR Plus 2-in-1. Also from Harder and Steenbach. I say new, I don't know if it's that new, I just know that uh, Splash Paint started carrying it recently. It does come with a great instruction book inside of it. You can see it comes with two different uh, little fill hoppers up there. They both have lids, which stick on almost a little too well, so I end up not using it. Um, came with two needles, it came with a 0.15 millimeter and a 0.4 millimeter. I typically stick with the 0.4 millimeter. Uh, I don't typically do a lot of real fine painting when I don't tape things off, so I don't necessarily know that uh, I'd see a lot of benefit in using the smaller needle. So going forward, this is going to be the airbrush I'm going to be using. And now here I am taping off the tail lights for the portion that should not be painted and is going to remain clear. And I'm going to make sure I only paint the portion uh, which is on the base, which is the same color as the vehicle. I'm using Splash Paints 2K Gray Primer. Went ahead and loaded up the hopper on my airbrush and went to town. I always give it a good clean up with the airbrush before I actually start painting, just use the air to blow off any dust. And I always start with a little bit of trickier areas, the bottom, uh, things around the grills, around headlights, stuff of that nature. Now I did test fit the lower body portions to make sure I knew exactly what needs to be painted in the body color, and I know exactly what's going to be visible once everything is put together, so I do know what needs to be painted. I should also note as I'm doing this, I think I had the airbrush set a little higher than I typically would. This coat uh, went on a little thicker than I typically like. Uh, fortunately, it is a white plastic model, so that does make it quite a bit less noticeable. Uh, were this a model that was made in a colored plastic, there's a greater possibility of the primer checking, uh, which basically means getting cracks in it with a white kit. In my experience, you don't really see that quite as much, so you can sometimes put that primer on a little bit thicker.
Now as you're spraying the primer, just bear in mind your goal is to get a nice even coat. Uh, just make it as even as you can. You will notice there will typically be a little bit of color showing through after the first coat. Uh, do not hesitate to do as many coats as it takes. On a white kit, again, typically two or three coats is enough, but if it were molded in, say, red, you might need a four, possibly even five sometimes, depending on how thick the paint actually goes on. Now you'll notice quite a few times here I adjust the flow through my airbrush. Uh, all just part of the challenge of getting used to a brand new airbrush. I think at this point I've got it pretty well figured out. I, you'll notice I'm priming the insides of these wheel wells. That is because, again, when I did my test fit, I did see that these will be pretty well visible once everything's put back together. So I wanted to make sure that these were painted in the same color as the body. Next, I'm painting the front firewall. I'm sorry, this is the rear firewall. Uh, again, not all of this gets painted in the body color, so I'm going to make sure to really focus on priming, um, especially well what is going to be painted in the body color. Now, I only use the splash paints primer on parts that are painted the body color. Uh, I'll show you in a future video what I do for everything else. general rule of thumb when you're applying a primer such as this is to try to get it to go on dry. Basically meaning that as you spray it on, it dries almost instantly. That's how you know you're putting on a thin enough coat. As you can see in this video, most of my coats are going on pretty wet, which is not typically how I like to paint. Uh, but again, it's, it's kind of down to learning the new airbrush here. Now in this particular component, there's only this little front piece that is actually painted in the body color, uh, so that is all I'm going to prime. Now this was a bit of a mistake because I wound up not priming the rest of this part, uh, but it did paint up okay, so I guess if there's no harm done, there's no harm done, and we move on. This here is the door panel. I did obviously prime both of them. I'm not going to bore you guys with that. One side's pretty much exactly the same as the other, so I'm only going to show you one for now. Uh, going forward, I do also tape these up and paint these wrong, uh, so I will show you what I did wrong, and I'll show you what they look like after I corrected them.
This is one of my turn signal lenses. Same thing, both are exactly the same, so I'm only gonna show you one. After this, we have the hood. Unfortunately, I did notice uh, at this point that there were two injector pin marks that I didn't remove from the hood. Unfortunately, and in an effort to make sure I get these videos done on time, I kind of just skipped over them and left them. Not a decision I would typically make, and I may go back in the future and fill those in and repaint that hood. And here's the trunk. And here we have the dashboard and the front firewall. With this particular primer, I like to let it dry 10 minutes between coats. Luckily it worked out that I had enough other items to paint, that it was about 10 minutes from the time I finished the body to the time I finished the last item. So I'm going to show you guys the second coat here in double speed, just to give you an idea of what that looks like, but obviously it's pretty much the same as the first. So that's it for priming the body and the body components. In the next video, we're going to go over painting all of those components. Uh, you'll get to see what color our beetle's going to be and uh, some of the other details on the body itself. So we will see you all then. Again, I'd like to thank the band The Astronomer for allowing me to use their music in these videos. And if you have not already, please go ahead and subscribe.